What's going on everyone? So I just wanted to sort of give my thoughts on Suicide Squad because this movie is getting a lot of hate and I just, as someone who absolutely loved this movie, I just want to say, you know, why I like this movie just to sort of, you know, bring up, you know, the positives in this movie because it's getting a lot of hate and in this video I'm not trying to persuade you to like this movie, I'm just going to give my general thoughts and opinion, so let's just get right into it. So let's start off with the casting and the characters. Will Smith was amazing as Deadshot. Cara Delevingne was really good as Enchantress. Um, Jai Courtney, Jai Courtney even, he's usually not good at being, you know, likeable in movies like Terminator Genesis, but he was really, really good as Captain Boomerang. Margot Robbie was damn near perfect as being Harley Quinn. She was really sort of wacky, nuts. She was great in her character. The costume, I'm a guy, so I like the costume, but besides that, it was just, it worked for the character, so if she wore, like, her jest outfit, it would have just been really out of place, so I think that the costume works in the way that the movie was done. And lastly, this one's sort of getting a bit of mixed reviews, Jared Leto as the Joker. And I don't think that the Joker in this movie should be getting as much hate as it is, because, yes, he isn't in the movie as much as, you know, fans would have hoped, but he wasn't really shown or sort of... This is how I feel. I don't think that he was sort of advertised to be the big bad guy. I think he was sort of advertised to be his own separate story, which he sort of is. But, I mean, he still did it really well. Jared Leto killed it as the Joker, in my opinion. He did a bit of Heath Ledger in the voice, but he still kept it original and like we've never seen before. So, I think that Jared Leto, props to you, mate. He did really, really well as the Joker. But the only thing that I don't really like about him is the amount of tattoos that he had. And the one that annoys me the most is, like, the cursive writing of damage on his forehead. If he didn't have that, and if he didn't have, like, the amount of ha-ha-has, I think that it would have been a lot better. Also, he has, like, the smiley face, and or, like, the happy teeth, and, like, the happy teeth here. He only used one of them, which is, like, he put it over people's mouths, or I think it was his as well. He put, like, the happy face over his mouth, and it was funny, it was really great. But he didn't use the one on his arm, so I think that if he didn't have both of them, it would have worked a lot better. Because he's kind of like the, you know, when you say, would you rather, he's kind of like the smart ass that chooses both of them, and he only used one of them, so if he only had one of them here or one of them here, it would have been a lot better, and it wouldn't have sort of... I don't know, it kind of annoyed me that he had both, but he only used one. So it's kind of like ordering two pizzas and only using one and throwing the other one away. And the only character that I sort of didn't care for is Slipknot because one, he wasn't in the movie very long and two, he didn't sort of have an introduction so I didn't know who he was. Like, you know, in the movie I was like, this is Harley Quinn, shows backstory of Harley Quinn, this is Deadshot, shows backstory of Deadshot, etc. It didn't do that for Slipknot. So when they're like running through the list and they're like, you know, here's such and such, you know, being in the army or like when they're sort of being presented to the military and stuff like that, Slipknot just shows up and I'm like, Who's, who's this guy? And then, you know, five minutes later in the movie, his head explodes, so it's like, oh, well, he wasn't too important anyway. You feel for the characters. Even, you know, Harley Quinn, you feel, even though she's, you know, loopy and nuts, she still has character, and, you know, you see in flashbacks, you see Joker, like, torture her, and you see her sort of being a bit normal beforehand, and you see her now. She's broken. You still... Like, she's crazy and stuff like that, but she still has the mental thoughts of she used to be a normal person, and that's great because it just shows you all of the characters and it makes you feel for them. And also, Killer Croc, even though I'm pretty sure he's entirely CGI, he didn't look like shit, and that's great. He still looks like, you know... There was no sort of bad CGI, even though they're like, oh, you know... Don't remember his name, but the, you know, Enchantress's brother, he looks really bad at CGI. I don't think he did. I think that he looked pretty normal. I think that he worked really well for the story, and he didn't look that out of place. Like, I didn't look at him and go, oh, this is shit CGI. I looked at him and went, man, this stuff's awesome. I'm glad that this movie's been made, because it just looks amazing. But the amount of tattoos that any of the characters have, like, I've already talked about Joker, and he's, like, damaged, and ha-ha-ha, and stuff like that, and I don't think that that really worked. I think that they should have lowered the amount of tattoos. Just like any of the characters, because Harley Quinn has tattoos. She's got, like, Lucky You. She's got, like, I think it's a... Hang on. <laughs> yeah, she's got, like, a love heart and, you know, tattoos on her face and stuff like that. The amount of face tattoos in this movie, I didn't really have a problem with, besides the Joker. El Diablo is covered in tattoos. 
I think that it still works. I don't know what he looks like in the comics. If he doesn't have tattoos, you know, I'll be a bit disappointed. But he looks great in this movie. He's supposed to look like, you know, a skull or just some dude who's covered in skeleton tattoos. And it looks great. If he's supposed to look like that, then that's amazing. And if he's not, then I think that it still works because, you know, it's what he wants to look like. And it's like a guy who actually got tattoos. It's not like, you know... If Deadpool rocked up and his mouth was sewn shut, oh, hang on, that happened. Also, it's not uncommon for movies to do this, but I think there are some bits in the trailer that are only in the trailer and not in the movie, such as Joker saying, I can't wait to show you my toys. You having beer? Whiskey. What am I, 12? How about you, hot stuff? Water. Even though they're cut out, I don't really care because it's not like a crucial plot detail. It's not like, oh man, now I don't understand the story. So it's like, even though it's cut out, I'm fine with that because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a director's cut because I think there's, I think it's 10 minutes of either Joker footage or just footage in general that were cut out. So in the director's cut, if there ever will be, which there probably will, hopefully, you know, people watch that and go, man, this movie's not too bad after all. So hopefully people change their mind about this because I love this movie. And guys, just another thing to add if you don't like this movie, it's not Wolverine Origins X-Men, and it is not Amazing Spider-Man 2. It is not that bad of a movie. So guys, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to put my thoughts out there instead of doing a review. I didn't, I don't like how much hate this movie is getting, especially by Rotten Tomatoes, because it's got like 24%, and that's absolutely ridiculous. Because this movie is great. It's got a lot of great directed action. It's got a lot of heart. The characters look really good, and I think that the actors pulled the characters that they were playing off really, really well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed the movie, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys.